And it wasn't that long ago that that feeling good was a really freaking good bench day. So if I can do that on a day that feels like today, we're gonna be okay. And we're back. Max effort bench day. Max effort, because I got me a case of the deloaditis. Like what I mean by that is it's a light week, it's a light session. And like when I have a week that I know is gonna be light, when I have a session that I know is gonna be light, like I'm not going into it with the same degree of mental preparation. Like I'm not like excited to train, I'm not excited to push all day long. And then like I get to the gym today and I'm like, I want to take a freaking nap. And I think like a lot of lifters will do this on the deload weeks. A lot of lifters will do this on their light sessions. And they almost end up shooting themselves in the foot a little bit because like they go into that light day all nonchalantly expecting it to be light, expecting it to be easy, expecting it to feel really good. And because they're kind of like going into it soft, they end up making their light week feel way shittier than it needs to because they aren't up enough for it. And like, even if it is light, even if it isn't gonna be hard, if I don't find a reason to wake up and I don't get a little bit excited for this, even if it is light, it's gonna feel like shit. And I really don't want it to feel like shit today. So I'm gonna do my best to wake up here and press a very light bar, at least a little bit assertively. So let's get warming up and get going. And I'm gonna do the old lead in with reverse grip for the warm up sets again because that worked so freaking well last week. Feels way better than when I was at braces. Like, it doesn't actually feel that much worse than last week, which is pretty good sign. All right, going for a decent little pause here. <laughs> IPF quality. And I figure this will be about where I'm putting last warm up on meat day. Let's go for another at least decent pause. IPF, here I come. And it wasn't that long ago that that feeling good was a really freaking good bench day. So if I can do that on a day that feels like today, we're gonna be okay. On to some jam presses. And not gonna push these hard, not gonna push them heavy, just gonna do enough to like feel the triceps and feel that upper back slurping the elbows and scaps down. And even if we're not working hard, still just gonna run these standard two work sets. And it's like, I think a problem that a lot of lifters have when they try to run a light week is that 
They go right to their main work, which is good for shaking off fatigue, but then they crank the shit of their accessories. And like, even if they go light on the main work, they still crank the shit of their accessories. It's like, they're still gonna have the fatigue from their accessories and they might not be as fresh as they think they will be from that lightning. <laughs> And I figure last week was a hard enough push on the dumbbell overhead press, but I still want to get some shoulder work in. And I figure running these kettlebell ER biased presserinos are going to give me a little more bang for the buck in the shoulder health department. So yeah, they feel good. They're nice. I'm a fan. Also, I thought like going backwards on the preacher bench was going to be a smart call because I didn't have to go to the dumbbell area. That was very busy right now. But this thing is very tippy when loaded in this direction. So hopefully I don't actually die. All right, set two. And like, obviously looking at me here, shoulder ER is not fantastic, but by doing these and letting that KB kettlebell, KB kettlebell acronyms, pull me towards that extra rotation, I'm getting better at controlling that end range. And if we get better at controlling and loading around that end range, I'm gonna get better at using that end range, duh. And if I get better at using it, that end range should best case increase or worst case, at least not get worse. So these are sick. And the front delt pump is just fantastic. And that is something that I am very much lacking. So very excited to hopefully grow some more of those suckers in the near future. Foreshadowing for how the vlog is gonna shift after this meet as I go on the get less obese, get more jacked quest. <sighs> and lighting's gonna suck here with the sun coming in, so I apologize for that, but more titty squeezing, hug practice, starting a little bit heavier than I did on these last week. And I figure like if there's one thing that I can kind of afford to work hard on right now, it probably is my pecs because they are a definite limiting factor on my current bench, but like they've never felt like they're limited due to fatiguiness where like my triceps, they have, I've had a couple bench sessions where they've been really 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 tired it's like my pecs just aren't quite back to where they need to be to be actually strong so that is why i am pushing these more harder today than i did my triceps like even if like my triceps are a bigger priority in how i bench like they're strong enough that they can get fatigued and they need that fatigue pulled off whereas the pecs, not quite there yet, which probably tells me that I should have been working more pec, more harder sooner, but lessons learned. And then someone's going to be like, of course, dumbass, you should have been working your pecs harder sooner because you tore a pec. But you know what? I'm sorry. So, and like it worked well enough if we already doubled 405, so I can't complain too, too much. <sighs> yeah, there we go. All right, took a pretty hefty jump on the stack so hopefully i don't talk to you guys for five minutes during a set again but yeah that's a little gnarlier 
spot still in the nice feeling range. Yeah, it is so cool how well the pack works, even if it isn't strong, strong yet. <sighs> you know, I think I'm going to go until this one gets hard enough, and then we'll go up again. Okay, another decent sized jump. See how she does. That's a little on the close to being too much side feel wise, but you know what? That route felt better. That route felt okay. Yeah, we're using it. <sighs> Strong titties incoming. And we're going to run more of these sloppy, shitty-like, because they seem to be doing good things with my shoulders, so why stop it if shit's working good? Left is actually starting to feel better than the right for the first time in a very freaking long time on these. Whew. And like, I know I just talked about how like on a D-load you shouldn't push crazy hard on all accessories, but like, I'm not gonna get any amount of measurable systemic fatigue from a rear delt machine. So we're fine. Whereas a jam press, a little bit of, oh. Well, that fell off fast. I shouldn't have been talking. I'm going to drop the weight. Okay, redo. Focus. No words. Maybe I can talk. Anyways, the point I was trying to make is that on a relative scale of effort necessary to perform the movement and the recovery demands imposed by it, pushing a JM hard, a lot more detrimental to the big picture of feeling fresh for bench press than one of these factors, so... Again, like similar to the pack flies, I'm okay working relatively hard here today because I'm not necessarily worried about this from a needing to recover from a rear doubt fly kind of perspective. So, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. And gonna run some more of these suckers. Just because when I posted them on Instagram, I had so many freaking dorks in the comments telling me that I'm doing these wrong and I should be, in fact, doing curls on the incline. And, like, what I love about Instagram comments is every time there's someone that is really unintelligent about the lifting advice that they're trying to give me, you click on their profile, they're, like, 180 pounds and think a 400-pound squat is heavy, so it's, like... Come on, guys. Maybe you should use your brains to, I don't know, use your fucking brain instead of commenting stupid shit on my posts. I thought I had a better point there, but I guess I don't. And, like, the advantage of this over a incline curl is that the amount of stretch you get in the lengthened position is so much more freaking intense. And with that amount of stretch, there's going to be, like, the stretch needed hypertrophy effect, which is neat. But, like, what I'm feeling right now is just the absolute immensity of the pump, which is very nice. And I figure we'll go 30s. And, like, aside from the comments, also we're going 35s because the 30s are taken right now. But aside from the comments telling me that I'm stupid because... This should be done on an incline. I had a legitimate question about why someone would want to put this much stretch on the bicep tendon, this much strain on the bicep tendon, 
if the bicep tendon is something that tends to tear. And the thing is that if we can progressively load a tendon and challenge a tendon, that tendon is going to get stronger over time. And a lot of times when we have bicep tendon issues at the top end of the bicep at the shoulder, it is because that tendon has not been adequately challenged and is not prepared for what it needs to do to stabilize the shoulder. And that's when it gets shitty. So if you guys can find a way to progressively challenge those bicep tendons, they are going to work better over time. And gonna do something a little bit different for my torso training today, primarily because the cable area is occupied, so I can't do cable hip flexor raises, but secondarily because my thoracolumbar junction, like the area where my rib cage meets my low back, feels like a freaking brick right now. So I wanna do something to kind of get that moving a little bit. And one of my favorites to get the spine rotating is these hinged kettlebell rotations. And I know they look a little bit aggressive and I know they look a little bit scary, but if your back is capable of handling the rotation, training it is going to keep you capable of handling this rotation and will expand your ability to rotate, will let all of your stuff back there feel nice and juicy. So if you're ready for it, these are sick. And if you're not ready for it, you can do the same thing, just slow down and ease your way through the movement. And like the goal with these isn't just to rotate at the low back, it isn't just to rotate at the hips, but to get the hips and the low back and the obliques to all work together. So like as I'm pulling up, I'm pulling over with my attitudes, I'm pushing over with my hips, I'm pulling with the obliques on each side and all of that stuff is gonna get worked really freaking hard. And I don't know, they just feel nice. And the low back pump you get from it is sick as well. And it makes people on the internet angry. So that is also a added bonus. And that is that. Delonitis in full effect because like, even if the body feels pretty good and stuff moved well today, I am freaking bagged out. And like, my only concern with that is with next week being my last heavy pusher prep, last opportunity to push in prep. If I still feel bagged out next week, I might end up going a little bit lighter than I had planned just to make sure that I'm not overcooked meat day. So it's gonna be kind of a in the moment decision on how hard I do push things next week. And like, it's gonna be kind of riding the fine line of pushing hard enough to carry me to the meat, but not pushing so hard that we are screwed up on meat day because we don't want that either. Like we don't want to be under prepared going to the meat, but we also don't want to be so cooked that our opener moves like shit just because we're really, really freaking tired. So we're going to have to figure that out as we go. And like, I'm fortunate that at this point in my career, I have a pretty good idea of how hard I can push things based on how I feel. I just need to be aware that I will have to make those decisions next week based on how I feel. So yeah, that's that for this week. That's that for today. And I guess it is time to say thank you guys for watching this. Thank you for supporting the channel. Peace out. Have a good night.